If I select this one, you can see my instance parameters now are right there. So we can go in to find a material for this and change up my uh, parameters. So in this one, I'm gonna change the height on this one to 40 feet, the length on this one to 90, and the width, I'll leave that one, we'll make that 60. Okay, so now you can see I've got uh, some different size here. Now, alternatively, what we can do, because we created those reference planes, uh, we can stretch these out. Okay, we can just use dynamic grips to change these dimensions. And you can see it's changing these to very arbitrary dimensions for the length and width. And the same thing goes for our height. But when I flip over to a 3D view, notice how I don't have those grips. Okay, so unfortunately I can't do this unless I make some changes to these reference plane types. So if I go back to the elevation here, let's see. We can grab this one. Again, I can change the length, but where's the grip for the height? Okay, so I'm gonna slip back over here to that mass family. And I'm gonna select these reference planes that you, you see here. They're saying that these are weak reference planes. So all the user created reference planes that I've got in here. So that would be this one, this one, this one, and this one. And then there's a top in there as well, which I think is this guy here. So grabbing all five of those reference planes, I'm gonna change this where it says is reference from weak to strong. Okay, so now I'll save that change. And then when I load this back into my project, we're gonna get this, this message. Now, nine times out of 10, you're gonna to wanna to select the second one. Override the existing version and its parameter values. Okay, so I'll click on that. And now you can see I've got, again, those dynamic grips. And let's see, if we go back to north, we don't have dynamic grips. Okay, I think I remember that actually happening before, but uh, these ones, I guess you still have to use um, the height parameter. Let's see if that holds true over here in this one. Okay. So basically the point that I'm, I'm getting at is depending on what type of reference you have, uh, these will behave a little bit differently. So what I would want to do maybe is have my align tool uh, available so that I can align this face here to this face. So if I select that as my reference and I grab that face, notice what's happened here is that it moved the entire, uh, the entire shape. Okay, so a weak reference I don't believe is going to do that. So let's take a quick look at that now. I'm going to go uh, just break that, bring it back over here and go back into the conceptual mass. And again, all my user created reference planes, well, these ones here, I'm gonna change these back from strong to weak. Okay, and then we'll save that. I'm gonna load this back in. And now let's take a look at what happens with this. So if I move that a little bit closer and I align those faces again, Okay, you'll notice that it's not staying uh, that height, or sorry, that width or length. It's moving the entire object. Okay, so what I might want it to do is actually extend that. I can drag that grip over, but there is a way to get that to uh, modify this actual dimension. Okay, and so to do that, we need to make those reference planes uh, strong references. So. Um, just an additional little feature as far as the um, the mass framework goes. You can see that there are a number of other types in here. So we've got weak, we've got strong, and then there's actually named references as well, like left, right, front, the ones that we've uh, created here, and then uh, center, front, back, and then center, elevation. So um, essentially, Let's see, if I select these, that was left. Let's try, we'll make this left. We'll make this the right reference. We'll make this the front. No, sorry, that's the back. Uh, 
this is the front and then we'll switch over here to an elevation and we'll call this one top okay so save that and load this back in so to illustrate this the reason why I wanted to show you this was because when we're looking at say uh, a wall in a project and we create a family say we put a door or a window in that wall when we hover over and we want to align things to these um, to these elements you'll see these sometimes like that's my center that's my origin reference plane or if I come over here right you can see that that's called reference R2 right and we can tab around these things uh, right now if I if I hover over that one that's saying the wall okay but that one is for the void essentially created in that window family okay so there's a lot of reference planes in any family essentially but if you name them they'll have a, a little bit more specific behavior okay so that was just something I want to show you regarding these other families oh. okay so you'll notice if you missed that this time when I hit the align and I change um, where this line is watch what happens with this line so I grab my reference select this one this one stays the same and now essentially my instance parameters have changed to suit my modify tool so if I hit align and, and move that over okay so uh, just some different behaviors that you'll see using these different reference types um, and then of course if we switch this back over to 3d we can grab either of these masses and then go into the mass usage material and we can create that material that we're going to use so if this one is going to be um, let's say that this is going to be office space okay I'm gonna go in here create a new material I'll rename this and call it uh, schematic and office okay and then for that material I'm gonna give it a color so we'll go into graphics change the color on this to be like a, a nice orange color and then I want to have that same RGB value for my surface uh, sorry for my cut color as well so I'll just change all of these these are, these are sorry these are for patterns okay so the pattern if you place a pattern on the front of this like a, a brick hatch or whatever that's going to be the line for that pattern and cut patterns and surface patterns are slightly different the surface pattern shouldn't scale when you change the scale of your view whereas a cut pattern is more of a it, it's drafting and it should scale so if it's concrete then it should be more dense at a detail scale rather than I'd say 1 to 100 or an eighth of an inch to a foot okay so these should be fine I don't really actually need to change these and if you did want you could put uh, a render appearance in here so this is 208 116 32 so in here I'm gonna type in 208 116 32 okay now I've got that same value and when I hit OK right we can see that I've got that material on there but I'm still not seeing the color and that's simply because of the shade mode I have on here so if I switch that over you can see now that it's uh, solid whereas the default material for masses by category is uh, like a transparent they're kind of uh, they're not fully opaque like this one here okay so We'll come back to this in another video. Uh, I want to keep going with this in a second, uh, second part, and we're going to explore in a little bit further detail some of these other tools and how we create some more complex forms using the in-place massing tool. So uh, stay tuned, and we'll get back to that in just a moment. Thanks for watching. Bye now.